Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, reading the Bible together. Um, I will read today uh, Genesis chapter 1 and then three verses into chapter 2. So Genesis 1 to 2-3 uh, because that's the seven days of creation. And then we'll chat about it for a minute. Um, let's start by praying. Uh, dear Lord, thank you that we can read your word. Thank you for giving us a written word, Lord, a revelation sanctioned, stamped by you so that we can learn about your work, your ways, uh, God, your revelation to us. And I just uh, pray you open our hearts and minds today to capture what you're saying and how you're saying it for true understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, as you know, I'm in my shed. Uh, this is my little studio. I love it out here. I make my coffee. I think today a neighbor is working on something, so we might hear some banging and sawing. I heard my dog run out and start barking. I just thought, okay, don't worry about it. We, we, this, this, this is not too much for us. Um, so, uh, let's just read through this, okay? And then let's talk about it. Coffee first. All right, Genesis 1 to Genesis 2, chap, uh, verse 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together. He called seas and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning. The third day. We're getting there. Hang in there. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let there and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. Coffee time. Mm. Four days into creation here. All right. Some things to note right away, friends. We see different genres in here, right? He made two lights, but, but the moon isn't a light, right? So there's, the moon is a reflector. He made one light and a reflector. It doesn't say that. So, and it said to rule over the day and rule over the night. That's kind of poetic language right there. What do you mean? These, they, they rule. Um, it's a, that's, what is that? Uh, metaphor. Um, so anyway, just we have to pick up on the genre Moses is writing in a little bit here. And God said, 
Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. Then there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Here's a very important verse, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that is breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Now we go into the first three verses of chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work, that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done so god blessed the seventh day that's my dog chatting to the neighbor dog but then my dog tends to walk away and go quiet again so here's hoping he walks away all right very last verse interrupted by my dog so God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Okay. So we got um, we got this chapter one and three, three verses into chapter two. The dogs are coming down. That's their little ritual. Or they bark, say hi, and then they go quiet for, for a while. Okay, friends, this book here we got Moses who met with God walked with God he had a history you know that you, you will hear the stories of Moses in the burning bush and he meets with God and God calls him to go free the Israelites and, and Moses was a friend of God we're told in uh, Exodus 33 I think he spoke with God as a man speaks to a friend face to face Moses had a history with God so then Moses is task with writing these what are the first five books of the bible genesis exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy here moses who's a man who has a history with god and god's people and he's starting off the narrative under the the, the divine inspiration of god and he says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth now listen this is not a science book this is not Moses digging into the different elements and what came first and what came second. That's not really the point. We, we don't live life like this. We don't live life, you know, the, the, the light was created on the first day and that really matters to me in my day-to-day -day life. No, it doesn't really matter. Don't get me wrong. There are things in this account and the order of God's creation that I believe are divine, they're mysterious, but they're not the big picture. The big picture here is that Moses is saying, God is the creator behind all of creation. And if you break it down, remember Jesus said, unless you change and become like a child, 
You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. There's, um, we, we, that's Matthew 18, 3. You see, in two chapters time is when mankind sins because we want to become like God, knowing good from evil. We eat from the tree of knowledge and our minds are scrambled, basically. Our, 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 we eat from a tree of knowledge and we lose pure knowledge. Sin and death enter the world and they enter our minds. That's why we're told to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2. That's why we're, we're instructed to set our mind on things above. Colossians 3, uh, 1. Um, Philippians 4, 8. Set your mind on these things. We have to steer our minds because we ate from the tree of knowledge through which death, sin, came it was literally the tree it was the representation of rebelling against god in god's way the impure came to us and it is not a coincidence that it was called the tree of knowledge of knowing it's so funny why do we trust our knowledge so much we we think more is more when actually the tree of knowledge was the was the portal to hell basically um I think Ecclesiastes 118 says, with the increase of knowledge is the increase of sorrow, not the decrease of sorrow. So here, Moses is not writing in the vein of a prideful man. He's writing the account of the revelation of the God that he already knows parted the Red Sea, brought water forth from a rock. And Moses is saying, look, in the beginning, in the beginning, it is God that created everything, everything, animals, light, stars, moon. He's, he's in a way, Moses is robbing the pagan world. Some people might worship the moon, worship. He's like, he both like, no. Okay, here we go again. My video stopped and it said my storage was full. So I've just spent time deleting lots of apps and let's see, will it get me to the end of this reflection? Then I'll have to manage my storage a little better. So I was saying that Moses was kind of robbing the pagan world of worshiping creation. He's saying, no, God is the one that created everything, owns everything. We got one God. Um, that's really the point of Genesis 1, my friends. It's, it's not a science book. It's not the thing, as it were, to, I don't know, to pick apart, you know, creation versus evolution. They're... they're Things like that, it, it's not a science book. It's a revelation book. It's far above science. It's the story about that which in, within which science was created. Listen, a couple simple analogies. Um, it's a little bit like getting a Lego set and building something super cool and all these kids getting hyper-focused on building cool things with the Lego, then maybe they start to boast, like I can build this, I can build this, then they get super analytical and knowledgeable. This piece is to connect this piece to this piece and the color of this piece, blah, blah, blah. Someone steps in and takes their focus off their own skill in building with Lego and out of Lego and maybe raises the question of who built all of this Lego in the first place. Not what have you built with it and not analyzing the structures and the elements of it but who actually created the lego itself and gave you these sets to work with right that's the difference the bible is basically saying look we're not getting to the nitty-gritty of the different chemical elements and how we can use this part of creation to connect with this part that's science that's beautiful this is stepping back and going but who made these trees? Who made wood? Who made water? Who separated the water above us from the water below us, right? This is about God. It's above and beyond any discussion of science or the, the, the elements that connect dots here within our small little world. We're working with the Lego set. This is telling us who created the Lego. Um, amazing verse, Hebrews uh, three four says. Um, did I just quote. I don't even know what I put in the first section of this video. Maybe I did already say this. Um, I'll say it again. Um, maybe I'm doubling back. Hebrews three four. It says every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of all things. Every house is built by someone. 
but God is the builder of all things. That's what Genesis 1 is really about. It's staking a claim. It's saying there's one God. He created it all. That's the point. Now, um, it, yeah, so all I'm saying is the, it can be a distraction to get too close to the detail and start to litigate and debate. God said two lights, but there's really only one light, one reflector. God created the light, but then day came later. And I don't know if we were supposed to look that close. The, the account of Moses is more about who is God, what has he done, Let's keep him, recognize him, worship him. What are his commands to us? It's about knowing God. It's not about picking apart the text, the minutiae. That is a constant sin of people, always has been, always will be. You know, the, uh, the Sadducees, there were these sects, right? Sadducees, Pharisees. I, I don't know the, the great details of what they all differed on, but there's plenty of other sects today. Um... But the Sadducees challenged or came to Jesus and put together some ridiculous thing about, it says in the Bible, a man marries wife. This is in Matthew 22. She dies. The brother should marry her. What if that brother also died? Then another brother. They gave God this scenario, this theoretical scenario. What if all the brothers and then they all died? Whose wife would she be in the resurrection? Jesus was so gracious, Matthew twenty-two, twenty-nine. 29. He said, you are in error. You are in error because you do not know the scriptures together with the power of God. Scriptures together with the power of God. The scriptures are not meant to be something that we dig into and get prideful on and start picking apart words and pieces that don't really matter. They take our focus off God being the creator who owns my soul to me having great answers for Bible trivia down at church Wednesday night fundraiser for who knows what we're not meant to pick apart the Bible for head knowledge we're meant to read and understand the Bible in a way to bring us closer to God and often the more we know about it we can become farther from God another incredible verse John 5 39 to 40 Jesus said to the Pharisees, you search the scriptures because in them you think you possess eternal life, but you refuse to come to me and have life. That is like, that's incredible. The purpose of the written word is to know the living word and to not be prideful, but to be childlike, Matthew 18, 3. The account of creation is that God is God. And then really we move on. We don't debate and fight and get prideful and divide camps of well that's evolution and creation it doesn't really matter there's still questions of you know sin and suffering and hope and death it, we believe god created the world the question is who is that god that's really the question who is that god if someone comes flat out and says i don't believe that god created the earth we well, can't do a whole lot about that we're told in the Bible that people should believe because of the testimony of creation. And I'll leave you with this, these, these couple of, this, this is a really important point. We're not to be prideful or judge people. People are deceived. Some people are very sincere about the, what they see and don't see, but other people aren't <laughs> sincere. We're told in Romans 1.20 that the invisible God, the, 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 the invisible attributes of God, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood by what has been made so that men are without excuse creation is an evidence of god that there is designer there's a creator and people should seek him it we're told that mankind is without excuse in terms of their pursuit of god because of the evidence of creation that's romans 1 20. so again in, in, the, in the spirit of Jesus, we don't debate and beat people over the head like, oh, you should believe you're so stupid. I mean, look at the, the evidence of Christian. We don't go there. Jesus didn't work like that. There's a spiritual battle. But yes, we're told in the Bible that creation is evidence that there is a God to be sought out and found. And if people aren't seeking God, uh, we're told that people are really without excuse because all of creation says there is a God and he should be sought. 
That's Romans 120. Also, uh, Psalm 19, 1 and 2 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. Creation speaks to a creator God. That's what chapter 1 is saying. God created it. I believe it. You believe it. Some may not believe it. We don't have to fight that. We just simply say the, the revelation of the scripture starts with the claim. There's one God. He created it all. That's the beginning of the story. That's the beginning of the pursuit. If people don't opt in and they're like, I don't believe there's a creator God. Leave that between them and God. You know, God says they should believe. They should be in pursuit of him. Um, the, uh, uh, so let me see. Hebrews 3, 4, very important. God created all things. Romans 1, 20, creation is evidence. And mankind is held accountable for the knowledge of creation to be pursuing God. Psalm, poetry, Psalm 19, 1 and 2, just saying that the creation sings about God. Night and day pours forth speech. So um, in this account, my friends, man and women made in the image of God to, to rule the earth, um, it's a springboard. It's the starting point. It's just like, there's one God, he made it all. Let's find out who he is. Let's go. Let's seek him. Seek him and you'll find him. Jeremiah 29, 13. If people aren't in pursuit of God, uh, that's not your problem. And it's not my problem. We simply testify. We say, well, we believe the revelation is that there's a creator God and he claims it. Um, and we move on. All right. I hope I can stitch these two little videos together seamlessly. God bless you.